Hey everybody, it's Pumpkin, and we're going to make some choices today. Yeah, we're going to play that game again because we've got to find out what's going to happen in Chapter 2. Is that exciting enough for you? I know. It is kind of fun, though. you got to admit, pretending like you're a teenager again and just, you know, doing silly stuff. I, I don't know. It's never grew up too much, right? Don't, don't be such a stodgy old... Foggy. It's fun. Play games, right? Play play some games. Make some bad choices. Safer on a on a game than in real life. Yeah. Okay, I'm still trying to get this thing to work. Horrible video resolution on that last one. We're going to have to restart the chapter. Sorry. I am down here. Out of time. <clears throat> You watch your, you watch with your heart in your throat. Let me move this. You watch with your heart in your throat as the bedroom door creaks open. Dot dot dot. A little bit more. Yeah. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. To reveal a young woman dressed in the fashions of a bygone era, her dark eyes fixed on you. Don't be afraid, lunatic. I don't mean you any harm. Uh, who, who are you? My name is Eleanor Waverly. Welcome to Braidwood Manor. You're, you're Eleanor Waverly? As in that, Eleanor Waverly? I'm afraid so. You must have at least a hundred questions right now, dot dot dot. Yeah, you could say that. And I'll do my best to answer them, but I must ask that you be patient with me. There's Still, so much I don't understand about this place, this existence. Tell me, what are you? Your kind <clears throat> would call me a ghost, I suppose. That's what I am. But I don't feel like a ghost. What do you feel like then? Hmm? I feel the same as I did in life. Except it feels like something's missing. Or like I've taken a wrong turn. I feel lost. Forgotten. Uh, tell me. How did I get here? Uh, about that. It seems my little brother, Simon, gave you a scare. <laughs> and you fell and bumped your head. I carried you upstairs and put you to bed. I hope you don't mind. Uh, not at all, I guess. You carried me? Yes. I just said that. Are you feeling all right? 
Yeah, I think so. I just mm, didn't expect that, I guess. I'm not as fragile as I look, Lunatic. Tell me, where am I? Braidwood Manor, of course. <laughs> oh, okay then. When am I? That's an altogether more difficult question. I know that in your world, this house is a shadow of its former self. My world? So, we're somewhere else? I don't know, Lunatique. I've come to think of this place as a memory. The rest of the world kept moving and we just stayed the same. <laughs> Now it's my turn to ask you a few questions. Uh, okay. To start with, why are you here? I'm here because I want to learn more about life after death without having to die first. I need to learn everything I can about ghosts. So, you're not afraid to be here? You wanted to meet me? Uh, well, I won't pretend that this isn't a bit unusual, but yeah, I guess so. But yes, I wanted to come here. I wanted to meet you and, and your siblings. Uh, why, might I ask? You look at... <clears throat> Hold on. You look out across the grounds of Braidwood Manor and suppress a shiver. It's... Uh, complicated? <laughs> As you peer through the frosted glass of the window, you notice a dark shape standing amidst the trees on the edge of the property. <gasps> dot, dot, dot. Jonathan! Your brother's ghost melts into the trees, leaving you looking out at a bare expanse of white snow. Eleanor moves to stand beside you, and she lays her hand on your shoulder. I think I understand. You were haunted before you ever set foot in this place. Eleanor? This is why I need to learn more about you, about your world, otherwise dot 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 I'll never be able to help my brother just dot 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 let me say stay here please I promise I won't cause you any trouble a frown creases Eleanor's eyebrows and then she smiles slightly come with me where are we going I'm giving you the grand tour, of course. After all, dot dot dot, if you're to stay here, you may as well get to know the house. You hurry to keep up with Eleanor as she strides out into the hall. So, you let me stay? Of course. We never get any visitors anymore, and it would be nice to have company. You follow Eleanor out onto the second floor landing of the Grand Foyer, gasping at the sight of a 
of the familiar room restored to its former glory. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. What was it like growing up here? I didn't grow up here. Well, not entirely. We left England when I was 15. That must have been hard. I certainly threw more than my fair share of tantrums, but I came to like it here in my own way. Still, I would have liked to see to see England again before dot dot dot. Eleanor trails off, turning away from you to continue down the staircase. Well, let's not talk about that. I'm sorry. Don't be, it's not your fault. Just then, you hear a sudden crash from somewhere downstairs. What was that? Eleanor looks pained for a moment, and then her expression resolves to a tired smile. Mm -hmm. Nothing you need to worry about. Okay, if you say so. Let's walk. When can I meet the rest of the family? Very soon, but there's something you should know. What's that? Unlike myself, my siblings aren't aware that they're dot 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 that they're what dot 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 you know dead what but why haven't you told them how can you ask such a thing what do you mean what do you mean what do you mean i'm sorry I shouldn't be cross with you. You're just a simple, stupid girl. I mean, you can't possibly imagine what it's like to live with the knowledge that you're not really living at all. Trust me, Lunatic, ignorance is bliss. I, I wouldn't dream of taking that away from my siblings. But how come you know? I'd rather not say. I'm sorry, Lunatic. You silly, silly girl with all the questions. It's just too painful <laughs> to listen to you blathering on. You're welcome to stay, but shut the hell up. I mean, don't say anything to the children that would upset them. Don't talk about where you're from or what the world is like beyond these walls. Just let the children be children, lunatic. Simple-minded folk like you. I mean, that's all I ask. Oh, all right, Eleanor. I won't say anything, I promise. We'll need an explanation for who you are and why you're here. I know. I'll introduce you as their new governess. Do you have any experience as such? Um, I did some babysitting in high school. Perfect. It won't be difficult, you'll see. Simon's the only one who really needs watching. Clarissa and Thomas are old enough to look after themselves. Those are your other siblings? Well, yeah, dummy. I mean, yes, they're 14 and 12, respectively. Simon's only 8. They're all watching in the parlor, if you're ready to meet them. Although, it would be better if you wore something el else. Ooh, what's wrong with what I'm wearing? Well, it's hideous. I mean, nothing at all. It's 
very pretty, but it's, well, <laughs> an acrostic? What the hell is that word? That's a big word. I don't know. Uh oh. Oh. W what am I supposed to wear? Let me see. Anything but that, really. You follow Eleanor back upstairs to another bedroom. She goes to the wardrobe and starts searching through dresses. I should have a dress you can wear. We're about the same size, after all. She pulls out a dark purple gown with an elegant white collar and pulls it up to you. This ought to fit you nicely. I'll give you some privacy privacy while you try it on. What will you wear? Well, you'll have to wear this. Yeah. All right. Eleanor comes back to check on you, and her eyes go wide. Oh, my God. How do I look? Perfect. Really? I've never worn anything like this. Clearly. I mean, it suits you. And now that you look the part of the governess, are you ready to meet your charges? Uh, yeah, I think I am. Lead the way. Eleanor leads you back downstairs to the parlor, where the three younger Waverly siblings sit expectantly. You recognize Simon, the boy from the night before, and he averts his eyes sheepish, sheepishly when you meet his gaze. Children, this is... We know who she is. She is just like Simon said she would be. Yeah, that's the girl I saw. What a beautiful dress. Thomas narrows his eyes suspiciously at you. We haven't had a visitor in ages. Who are you exactly? This is Lunatique. She's your new governess, and I expect you to treat her with the utmost respect. Thomas looks outraged. Governess? I don't need a governess. I'm almost as old as she is. Besides, you already take you already take care of us, Eleanor. Hey, aren't you gonna give me a chance? Maybe we'll be best friends, especially Thomas if he's close to my age. <laughs> you never know. Simon looks bashfully at the floor. I'm sorry, Miss Lunatic. I'm not. I'm 12 years old, and I can look after myself. And you, too. Thomas, please forgive my brother's coarse manners, Lunatique. I, for one, am very excited to have another lady to talk to about lady things. What does that make me? Um, you're more like our mother. Eleanor sighs heavily. Oh, wonderful. You can see why I need a break, Lunatic. Oh, nonsense. This will be fun. I can't wait to get to know all of you better, especially Thomas. I see I chose my assistant well. In any case, it's about time you three went to bed. Aw, uh, Eleanor, can't we stay up just a little longer? Eleanor relaxes, her stern look giving way to a smile. I suppose that'd be all right, just this once, though. Lunatic, would you help me fix the children some hot cider before bed? Of course. A short while later, you and Eleanor bring cups of hot cider out to the children. Yay! Thank you, Miss Lunatique. 
Just lunatic is fine, Simon. That wrong voice. You hand a cup full of cider to Thomas. Thank you. Was that a thank you I heard out of you, Thomas? What a rare treat. <laughs> Eleanor, why do we never have cocoa in the evenings anymore like we used to? Eleanor, Eleanor, Eleanor turns her face away, her eyes suddenly sad. Um, it's just been harder to get these days. Oh, that's too bad. I used to love when Mother and Father would let us stay up late and... Well, yes, let's not talk about them, shall we? Okay, sorry, Eleanor. That's quite all right. Lunatic, I can put the children to bed if you'd like to get some rest. I know you've had an eventful day. <laughs> sure. Okay, should I stay in the same room upstairs? Well, of course. Uh, you're not going to mess up all the sheets. For God's sake, I'll help you find your way back. Eleanor leads you out of the parlor and back into the foyer, her voice dropping to a whisper. There's one more thing I should tell you about Braidwin Manor. What's that? Whatever you think you hear, never leave your room after dark. Do you understand? Uh, okay, no more leaving my room after dark. I'm glad we understand each other. Yeah, me too. Good night, Lunatic. Good night, Weirdo. A short while later, you tuck yourself in bed and lie in the dark, thinking hard. Am um, I losing my mind, or is all this really happening? And how can I get Eleanor to tell me why she and her siblings are all trapped here? I suppose I'll have to earn her trust first. Dot, dot, dot. Better make sure not to break any of her rules. She can be a real bitch. And as you as you lie there in the darkness, you're suddenly startled out of your reverie by a notification on your phone. And switching voices. Oh, oh, it's from Victor. Hey, just wanted to check in. Still think you're crazy for staying up there by yourself. But I guess that's what makes you you, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, that's sweet of him. Just then, you notice a curious sound beneath the howling of the wind outside. Is someone crying? You strain your ears and catch the sound again, a low, mournful wail that seems to echo through the halls. Is that Eleanor? You get out of bed and hesitate before your bedroom door. Eleanor said not to leave my room after dark, but if someone's in trouble... What should I do? Well, I guess I should look through the keyhole. You kneel down to peer through the keyhole, seeing nothing but the empty hallway beyond. Looks like the coast is clear. Now, whoever's making that sound, it's only getting louder. Is it? I'm going out there. You step into the hall, shutting the door softly behind you. You follow the sound through the manor's twisting halls down the stairs of the foyer and deeper into the house than you thought possible. Just how big is this place? At last, you come to a long hallway ending in a solitary door, a door covered in rusted locks and bound, in, uh, bound up in iron. What the? You draw close to the door's time-worn wood and hear the sounds of weeping beyond. The noise starts to sound less like weeping and more like the plaintive cries of a wounded beast. Whatever's making that sound is just past this door. Huh? Is anyone in there? The sobs quiet, followed by a sick silence that feels like all the air's been sucked out of the room. The door suddenly starts shaking. Fire explodes from around the door frame. Oh no! 
You jump back, fingers slither up your arm and yank down on your wrist. Eee! Okay, it's a short one. Because <laughs> it's the second time I've done this. Alright, we're gonna continue this some other time. I've had enough of this. More next time. If there is a next time. Dun dun dun. Da da da. Okay, I know I'm talking a little faster than I normally do, but I just maybe had a little bit too much coffee and we're just trying to squeeze way too many things into the short little bit of time that we have today to get stuff done. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you in the next one. Okay, guys, bye.